In this video, we'll create this effect and it's from Fox. And as you can see, it's a graph. You can apply this effect to any infographic. So I think it's really useful. And Fox is a really cool channel. So we have a lot to dive into. If you want to download this as a template, you can for a small fee in the link in the description down below. And also if you want to have the free assets, you can also download those in the description down below. Now let's jump into it. When we look at our example, I see a couple of things. I see the graph, of course. I see the background. I see this uh, cool typewriter text effect and you see the the graph go up really smooth and then also a different color then later on it just repeats so it's exactly the same so let's create the background first i think the background is a blurred image or it's a certain pattern we'll try to recreate it so i'm just gonna create a new solid and color maybe just a gray something like something like this okay okay perfect now layer new solid Okay, and then we're gonna use the Fractal Noise plugin. And this is a really useful plugin that you can use for a lot of things, but also creating texture in your image. I'll go into Transform and I'm gonna increase the scale by a lot. And I'm also increasing the contrast. And then uh, let's decrease the brightness. Then we'll go into toggle switches. I'm gonna change it to screen. I'm gonna add a blur or a Gaussian blur to our fractal noise layer. Let's increase this by a lot. Now, before we put the blur on it, press Command Shift C or Control Shift C on Windows to pre-compose the layer and put everything in one composition. Make sure move all attributes is on and we can call this noise. Let's make sure the mode is on screen and then add a Gaussian blur to the noise layer. Actually, I think it's better to just use the normal mode because then we can really dial it down. But when I press T for transparency, I can decrease the opacity and just increase it a bit, something like this, 5%. And the cool thing about this, you can even animate the turbulent noise. If you go into the evolution of the turbulent noise, you can move it around and it just creates more depth. And it's just a bit better than just a static solid. It just adds a bit of texture. Now for the graph, we'll just add text first. Just press here, we're gonna do 15 trillion. Make sure that it's all caps and then I'm just gonna pick a cool font that I like. Let's align it to, to the right, make it really small, something like this. And then the next line is gonna be 10, 5, and 0. Select all the text layers and then increase the uh, line height to something really high. Something like this will do. I'm gonna move it more to the left, something like this. Now press the pen tool, I'm just gonna create some lines. So basically just select a line, hold shift to make it straight. And we have our first line. <laughs> We're gonna increase the stroke. So make sure the stroke is on a solid color and I'm gonna make it white, something like this. Let's see what it looks like when we deselect everything. Looks pretty cool. Maybe even decrease it to two. No, that's way too low. <laughs> okay, we'll make it four and then we'll just decrease the opacity. So it's, so it's a bit more subtle. Move it over. Then we can just select the layer by double clicking. And when you hold Alt, you'll make a duplicate of it. And then you hold Shift to move it straight down like this. Hold the space bar to move your composition. And we'll do the trick again. Hold Alt to duplicate it and hold Shift to move it down. One more time. There we go. Let's zoom out and see what we created. I think the opacity can go even lower, maybe even to 30%. So it's these really thin and like nice. It's a cool design, right? When uh, when something is not like straight in your face, but maybe opacity around 30% always works. Now the bottom text, really easy. Just press the text tool and then we can just start typing 2002. 2000. Align it to the left. Then I'm also going to make our font a bit thinner. And I think also same with this one. Also make sure that's a bit more thin and maybe also decrease the opacity a bit. Not too much, but so it's a bit less in your face. Now, if this doesn't fit well, you can always increase the tracking so it fits perfectly. Or you can, of course, go into the text layer and just make sure that everything has two spaces. So there's a bit more room between it. Now for the bars, uh, we can just use a standard rectangle tool and of course a standard fill. It doesn't have to be perfectly on the line and I'll show you why later on. So we can just create a graph, duplicate it by pressing on the layer and then Command D or Control D on Windows. Move it over, hold Shift to make sure that's on the same axis. And then I'm gonna double click the layer. I'm gonna increase the size and move it up a bit. Just make sure that it's below the first line. We can do this over and over again. And I'll do some magic in three, two, one. Now for the last one, I'm gonna change the fill to a more red color. Just make sure the stroke is off and actually select all the layers, make sure the stroke is off. 
And I think they could also be a bit more thin. I think it's more luxurious if things have some breathing room. So I'm just gonna select a shape and you can go into the size, make sure to unlink it. And then I can move this to a lower number, for example, 80. Let's do that with every layer. And to do this quickly, you can select all the layers. Then in the layer control, select all the layers, unlink it and type in 80 like that. Or you can just hold command or control to select all the layers here. And then again, unlink it and press 80. Now it doesn't matter that they're all at the bottom. We'll fix that later. But first we're gonna animate it. And I'm gonna show you a really crazy trick to make this really quick. Just press P for position, then press the keyframe or the stopwatch to set a keyframe, move this over, move it down, make sure that all the graphs are not visible anymore. So they're below the first line. Then select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, then select all the keyframes and then zoom in and then we'll make sure that it's really smooth. And then the last part, and this is the trick, but before we do it, we need to check on how long our composition is. So in this case, it's 11, 12, and basically I want to overlap it a bit. So I'm just gonna go back and you'll see what happens. So 11.05, I'm just gonna copy this over. I'm gonna right click again, keyframe assistant, sequence layer, paste this and press okay. And as you can see, they're perfectly sequenced. This is exactly what we want. Now go into the toggle switches modes and turn on motion blur. And then the last thing, what we're gonna do is we'll just pre-compose this. So we go to layer pre-compose, graph bars, okay? And just click the rectangle tool and we'll make sure to mask this properly. I'm just gonna select this and I'm gonna zoom in a bit. So to really make sure that the mask is on the line. Go to the select tool, double click the mask, and then we'll move it down a bit so it's perfectly on that line. And let's see what this looks like now. And that looks amazing. I'm really happy with this. Now for the last part, we'll just put text here, for example, GDP China, make it a bit bigger, move it over. And I've said it before, just go to effects and presets, type in type writer, and there's this built-in effect, double click on it and play it and you see this really cool typewriter effect. Now it goes a bit too slow in my opinion, so press U to see your keyframes and then move these keyframes over a bit. That looks great. And then we adjust it a bit, it will look like this. And you can do this with any infographic or any progress bar. I think it's such a cool animation and don't forget to subscribe and also leave a comment on what you want to see next time. Then thanks again for all the support and then I'll see you next time. Bye.